Hi students, today we are going to discuss about the very important food component that is about the dietary fiber. People thought earlier dietary fiber is not going to be any use in the dietary management, but the current research has shown the many benefits of the dietary fiber and the dietary fiber fractions have been isolated characterized and shown the benefits. People used to talk about the crude fiber earlier, now that has become obsolete and the dietary fiber is the modern word which we have to use in the food science area. In the dietary fiber, if we look at two important molecules which we are going to discuss today is about the inulin and the other molecule is about the beta glucon. Inulin is also the dietary fiber fraction which is abundantly present in the commonly consumed foods like banana, onion, leek, artichoke etcetera. These fiber component not only adds to the dietary fiber content of the diet, but also use many health benefits. The beta glucon which has been known in many other common foods like cereals, millets also. Example of rice, wheat and many other cereals have been shown the beta glucon component as the dietary fiber fraction. Oats is a new food product which has been now flooded with the markets. People are consuming worldwide the oats because of its health benefits particularly the component of the beta glucon. So, beta glucon has been shown against many of the chronic degenerative diseases and particularly people are targeting this for the two important things one is for the weight loss another is for the diabetes management in addition to many other health benefits. Therefore, choosing the beta glucon rich foods as well as inulin rich foods which we are not only increasing the fiber that is dietary fiber component in our diet, but also we are encounter many of the problems which we are facing today. Therefore, with this background we are going to learn today about these two important components and their metabolism, their sources and their uses which we are going to deal. So, the objectives are the learner will be able to understand inulin sources, metabolism and its role in health and food industry, beta glucon sources metabolism and its role in various physiological processes and dietary management of non-communicable diseases. Beta glucon role in food and health industry also we are going to learn. So, inulin, inulin is naturally occurring polysaccharide and belongs to a group of soluble dietary fibers called fractons. What we have to learn is the dietary fiber is divided into insoluble dietary fiber and the soluble dietary fiber. Inulin belongs to the group of soluble dietary fiber. It is a non-digestible carbohydrate and this property allows it to pass through small intestine for fermentation in large intestine and it becomes health intestinal microflora. Most plants synthesize and store inulin as a means of storing energy and are usually observed in roots and rhizomes. So, if we look at the structure of the inulin very complex molecule, inulin is not simply one molecule it is a poly dispersed beta 2 1 fructan. The fructose units in this mixture of linear fructose polymers and oligomers are each linked by beta 2 1 bonds. A glucose molecule 
typically resides at the end of each fructose chain and is linked by an alpha 1 to bond as in sucrose. The chain length of these fructans range from 2 to 60 units with an average dp of around 10 degree of polymerization. The unique aspect of the structure of inulin is its beta to 1 bonds. These linkages prevent inulin from being digested like a typical carbohydrate and are responsible for its reduced caloric value and dietary fiber effects. So, if we look at the average daily consumption of inulin and oligofructose has been estimated to be 1 to 4 grams in the United States of America, whereas 3 to 11 grams in the European countries. However, no such studies were conducted in India, therefore, we, know, we do not have accurate consumption of inulin in Indian population. Inulin and oligofructose have many interesting functional attributes that are useful in formulating the food of today and tomorrow. The consumer of today is health conscious and demands foods which is both tasty as well as low in fat and calories with additional health benefits. So, in present day society the leading health concerns are heart disease, cancer, high cholesterol, weight control, osteoporosis and diabetes. Inulin and oligofructose are widely used in functional foods throughout the world for their health promoting properties. Use of garlic, ginger and onion in traditional Indian foods is well known. Fructan that is inulin and oligofructose are the ingredients that will meet the needs of food industry for healthy foods in the future. So, what are the various sources of inulin? Inulin is most commonly found in asparagus, leek, onions, banana, wheat, garlic, high concentrations in herbs and in large amounts in dandelion root, chicory root and elkampain root. These are the important sources where we can find inulin in higher concentrations. Jerusalem artichoke contains 14 to 19 percent of inulin fiber. Traditional artichokes may contribute to about 3 to 10 percent of their weight as inulin. One of the main sources of inulin fiber for food industry comes from chicory root powder. 15 to 20 percent of the chicory's root weight comprises of inulin. Therefore, food industry is using maximum chicory root for the extractions of inulin fiber. So, once we know about their sources and what could be its metabolism, we should also know about the inulin. Amylase and tylene which digest starch cannot digest inulin and hence inulin passes through digestive system intact. As I have told you already, this being the dietary fiber which is not digestible by the enzymes, so that it will be passed from mouth to the large intestine. In the large intestine, bacterial metabolize, bacteria metabolize inulin with the release of carbon dioxide, hydrogen or methane. Most of the inulin containing foods are grassy and these foods should be consumed in moderation at first. Unlike normal digestion which breaks starch into monosaccharides, in inulin as they cannot break it into monosaccharides, inulin does not elevate blood sugar level and help in management of diabetes. Inulin becomes similar to resistant starch and other fermentable carbohydrates as it passes through stomach and duodenum undigested and is highly available to the gut bacteria flora and also stimulates the growth of bacteria in gut. So, what are the dietary requirements? Inulin is used as a major source for the meeting daily fiber requirement. Due to consumption habits various varying between factors such as age, gender and locum, it is difficult to pinpoint the average inulin intake. As I have already mentioned that India needs to do such study to find out the actual consumption of inulin. 
By converting to functional foods containing inulin, this deficiency can be eliminated without the need to give up common household favorite foods such as bread, cereal and baked goods. So, what are the uses in the health and the food industry? Inulin has a multitude of characteristics beneficial to functional foods. The use of non-digestible oligosaccharides that is inulin can improve taste, texture and moisture in many foods. Inulin has gelling characteristics that can be used to make low fat cheeses, sauces, soups and table spreads. Its melting properties allow for easy processing of frozen desserts. Binding characteristics allow for inulin to be used in cereal bars. You might be seeing lot of such cereal bar products in the market now which are flooded using inulin as one of its ingredients. Additionally, as a fructose, inulin can be substituted for sugar when reduced sugar content is desirable which is much more useful in the prevention or in the management of diabetes. Uses in the health and food industry, inulin shows these advantageous properties as it contains 25 to 35 percent of the food energy carbohydrates. Inulin is a versatile ingredient having many health benefits. It increases calcium absorption in women and magnesium absorption in adults while promoting the growth of beneficial bacteria in the intestine, which is an important component as a food science and nutrition student which we have to learn and advocate such benefits to the community. Calcium deficiency leads to osteoporosis ultimately. Therefore, using such components for increasing the calcium is certainly benefit in the woman due after menopause. Inulin is insoluble fiber and is occasionally categorized as a prebiotic and FODMAP carbohydrates which rapidly ferment in colon to produce gas and draw water into the colon which is a difficult situation in individuals with irritable bowel syndrome. Inulin being a soluble fiber and is suitable for dietary management of diabetics and the medical uses. Inulin is not secreted nor reabsorbed in nephron hence in inulin along with its analog sinistrin is used to help measure kidney function by determining glomerulol filtration rate. This is very important as a student of nutrition one should learn when you want to know the kidney function the glomerular filtration rate is very very important where we can use this ingredient. In few mice experiments inulin was observed to show reduced carcinogen induced aberrant crypt foci in the distal colon during exposure to pathogens or tumor inducers. They also showed lowered mortality rate when exposed with listeria. Daily intake of inulin has shown to significantly decrease the disease activity and increase the amount of IL-10 positive mucosal dendritic cells in patients suffering from Crohn's disease. In vitro studies showed that inulin had selectively stimulated the growth of bifid bacteria and lactobacilli which are the most common health bacteria or most common prebiotics. Therefore, inulin has been shown a very great advantage for gut bacteria. The phenomenon in this process involves that inulin affected short chain fatty acid concentrations in lumen releasing butyrate which is the one of the well known short chain fatty acids which helps in regulation of regulation of many genes involved in proliferation, differentiation and apoptosis of colonic epithelial cells and also helps in stimulation of bifido and lactobacillus bacteria. Inulin is reported to decrease amount of cholesterol and triglycerides, hence benefits lipidemia and cardiovascular system. It is also used for rehydration 
and remineralization following important loss of water like diarrhea and diaphoresis. Inulin helps in growth of beneficial bacteria and also inhibits growth of invasive bacteria and hence promotes colonic health. Very important component which we have to remember that it not only helps in growth of beneficial bacteria, but also it inhibits the growth of pathogen bacteria. Inulin is a prebiotics bifidus factor enhances the growth of bifidobacteria, but it is non viscous its value for infant nutrition, gastrointestinal health, colon cancer prevention, blood sugar and lipid metabolism, bone mineralization, fatty liver disease, obesity and immunity is still controversial. Because many of the studies are now conduct being conducted and the controversial results are appearing. Inulin is used in medical tests to measure the total amount of extracellular volume and determine the function of the kidneys. Inulin is generally recognized as safe that is grass position has been given by the US Food and Drug Administration that is FDA. So, the next important component which we are going to deal is about the beta glucon. Beta, glu beta glucon is also a complex molecule or a heterogeneous group of non-starch polysaccharides consisting of D glucose monomers linked by beta glycosidic bonds. Beta glucons are soluble fibers which are effective at achieving and maintaining healthy cholesterol level and help in managing cardiovascular diseases. The simplest beta glucons are seen in linear and unbranched that is B13 D glucon seen in prokaryotes and eukaryotes like algae and fungi. Branched beta 1416D glucon and beta 1316D glucon are found in different groups of yeast, fungi and algae. In algae beta glucons are present as storage polysaccharides or cell wall components. So, what are the various sources of beta glucon? Beta glucon is a polysaccharide observed commonly in oats, barley, mushrooms and yeast, rye and wheat. Oat bran contains about 7 percent of 7 percent beta glucon. Dry rolled oats contains about 5 percent as does pearled barley. Whole wheat and rye contains about 2 percent of beta glucon. Psyllium husk also shows considerable amounts of beta glucon. So, when we take the rich sources of beta glucon particularly oats, when oats are processing may impact the molecular that is chemical structure and degree of polymerization, structural molecular interactions, functional properties like viscosity, water binding capacity and solubility and ultimately the health benefits of beta glucon. Steaming and flaking involving heat moisture and mechanical shear may affect the molecular structural characteristics of beta glucons and the interaction between beta glucons and the other oat components thus also impacting the viscosity of oat slurries. So, this is what we have to learn when we are talking about the beta glucon what will happen during the processing because usually we consume the foods either by boiling or steaming or by flaking of these oats, what could be the fate of these beta glucon, there is chemical structure or its degree of polymerization. So, in general processing effects on dietary fiber include solubilization and depolymerization that can influence physiological effects both in the upper as well as at lower gastrointestinal tract. So, what is the metabolism of beta glucon? Beta glucon is made undigestible by the beta linkages. They are highly fermentable in the cecum and colon. Degree of polymerization if it is more than 100 are completely insoluble in water. This conformation allows for stronger interactions and associations between chains that between the chains and the water molecules. The composition of the side substituted branches and the frequently 
frequency of these branches also determine the solubility of beta glucon molecules. A single that is 1 to 6 beta linked glucoside can transform the glucon into a more soluble form in comparison to its unbranched molecule. So, once we consume the beta glucon through various sources, the physiological effects particularly about the words which we are discussing the rich source of beta glucon are primarily attributable to the elevation of viscosity in the gastrointestinal tract caused mainly by the beta glucons. The increased luminal viscosity may lower the reabsorption of bile acid in the ileum thus increasing bile acids excretion in the feces. Physical elimination of bile acids from the enterohepatic circulation necessitates increased synthesis of bile acids consequently increasing cholesterol conversion into bile acids in the liver and eventually decreasing serum cholesterol which is a very important characteristic of beta glucon. The elevation of viscosity also shows intestinal transit and delays gastric emptying and intestinal absorption of nutrients such as digestible carbohydrates thereby reducing postprandial hyperglycemia and insulin secretion. These actions in turn increase satiety and promote weight loss. Thus beta glucons it works not only reducing the cholesterol, but also it reduces the glycemic index of the food by decreasing the glucose absorption. Usually beta glucons are insoluble fibers which can help meet daily dietary fiber intakes. However, 3 grams of beta glucons are required daily to effectively help lower the body's ability to absorb dietary cholesterol. And we should understand India primarily the vegetarian country more than 80 percent of Indians they consume plant foods as a source of their diet. Therefore, the dietary fiber fraction which are abundantly present in the commonly consumed plant foods will however meets the dietary requirements of dietary fiber in an average Indian population as long as they are consuming the recommended dietary allowances for the various food groups which has been described by the National Institute of Nutrition. So, what are the uses of this beta glucon in various areas? In immunomodulation, most of polysaccharides act as immunostimulants. Among them beta glucons were found to be most effective against infectious diseases and cancer. In vitro studies have shown both humoral and cellular immunity. They also demonstrated that beta glucons can enhance the functional activity of macrophages and activate the antimicrobial activity of mononuclear cells and neutrophils. Pretreatment of high risk surgical patients with intravenous yeast beta 1316D glucon decreased the infection incidence shortened intensive care unit length stay and improved survival in comparison to a saline placebo injection. In obese hyper, hypercholesterolemic men consumption of 12 grams of yeast with beta 1316D glucon over 8 weeks lowered total cholesterol concentrations and increased high density lipoprotein cholesterol levels only 4 weeks after discontinuation of beta glucon intake. In a mice study, it was observed that chronic consumption of chitin glucon from a fungal source improved metabolic abnormalities induced by high fat diet. Chitin glucon is a cell wall polysaccharide based three dimensional network in which the central core contains branched chitin beta 13 glucon. Chitin glucon decreased high fat diet induced body weight gain, fat mass development, fasting hyperglycemia, glucose intolerance, hepatic triglyceride accumulation and hypercholesterolemia irrespective of caloric intake. These beneficial effects were mainly attributed to restoration of the composition and or activity of gut bacteria. In insulin resistance, 
Several soluble fibers including beta glucan, psyllium and gorgum reduce postprandial glucose and insulin responses and improve insulin sensitivity both in diabetic and non-diabetic individuals. Arabinoxylon consumption at 15 grams per day over 6 weeks significantly lowered the postprandial responses of serum glucose and insulin to a liquid meal challenge test in overweight subjects with impaired glucose tolerance. In healthy subjects, the ingestion of 15 grams rye bread containing 5.4 grams of beta glucan reduced postprandial insulinemic responses without a parallel reduction in glucose responses as compared with the control bread. Delayed gastric emptying occurs with increased digestive viscosity, slowing subsequent digestion and absorption. High digestive viscosity decreases enzyme diffusion and stimulates the formation of the unsaturated water layer, decreasing glucose transport to enterocytes. Reducing the viscosity of gorgum following acid hydrolysis resulted in concurrent loss of its clinical efficacy. A relationship was noted between gorgum viscosity and its glycemic response. Short chain fatty acids resulting from the anaerobic bacterial fermentation of soluble dietary fibers such as beta glucan in the colon offer another explanatory mechanism for the protective effects of soluble fibers on glucose and insulin homeostasis. The short chain fatty acids propionic and butyric acid increased muscle expression of the insulin responsive glucose transporter type 4 GLUT4 via the peroxisome proliferative activated receptor that is PPAR gamma. Effectiveness of beta glucan in modulating glucose and insulin parameters is related to dose and viscosity which can be altered during processing. In fact, 85 percent of the variation in blood glucose concentrations is explained by the amount of beta glucan solubilized and not the total amount originally added to the food. On the other hand, the role of viscosity, molecular weight and solubility susceptible to modifications by food processing in regulating beta glucans effect on cholesterol metabolism has not been demonstrated and requires further investigations. So, in conclusion, inulin has a multitude of characteristics beneficial to functional foods. The use of non-digestible oligosaccharides that is inulin can improve taste, texture and moisture in many foods. Inulin has gelling characteristics that can be used to make low fat cheeses, sauces, soups and table spreads. Inulin helps in growth of beneficial bacteria and also inhibits growth of invasive bacteria and thus promotes colonic health. In vitro studies showed that inulin had selectively stimulates the growth of bifid bacteria and lactobacilli which are the most common health bacteria or most common prebiotics. Inulin is not secreted nor reabsorbed in nephron, hence inulin along with its analog sinistrin is used to help measure kidney function by determining glomerular filtration rate that is GFR. Inulin is generally recognized as safe, it has the grass position has been attributed given by the FDA. So, with respect to beta glucan, the another molecule which we have learned today of the dietary fiber fraction, beta glucans into food preparations has both beneficial and deleterious impacts. Such impacts mainly depends on the food products to which beta glucan is added in addition to the source, the form and the dose of beta glucan in use. For example, the addition of beta glucan to yogurts that is curd what we call dahi seems to impair their sensory qualities despite improving other rheological properties irrespective of the dose. On the other hand, addition of beta glucan to milk at doses not exceeding 1 percent may provide health benefits without compromising sensorial attributes. Beta glucans effectiveness in modulating glucose and insulin parameters is related dose and viscosity which can be altered during processing. In fact, 85 percent of the variation in blood glucose concentrations is explained by the amount of beta glucans solubilized and not the total amount originally added to food. Thus, dietary fiber fractions inulin and beta glucan 
has a beneficiary role in human health.